All right, thanks for coming today. Um, I think when you, when you take some time and you really look back at last week's game, it was a tale of two halves. Um, we went at halftime nine to three, hadn't played a perfect first half, but it was a very competitive first half. Um, we'd moved the ball on offense, but not finished drives. They really only had one drive, the first drive of the game, and then they had a, a drive for a field goal. And I felt good about where we were at at halftime, and felt good about our plan, and felt good about coming out and having a heck of a second half and being in a position to win the game. And then in the second half, once the momentum shifted for them, and, and we could not grab it back. And um, on offense, we had several three and outs. On defense, I, you know, um, we couldn't quite contain them. And, <coughs> and, and when, when the momentum kept running in that third quarter, and it was very difficult for us to, to get anything going um, in that game. And uh, so we got to get back on track. Um, I expect our team to be very resilient um, and to come back out this week and have a heck of a week. We have a two-game season left to play, and um, we got seniors who want to sit out in the right way. We got a young group of guys on the team that want to um, finish the season out in the right way to jump into next year. So we have a bunch of different things that we're playing for here as we continue to move forward with our team. And I'm um, looking forward to getting back out on the field with them this afternoon and uh, start that process. Uh, with that, I'll take any questions. Uh, Rob, uh, <laughs> Division One sports is about women. Uh, <laughs> Job security, are you worried at all about your situation? I am not. Um, nobody puts any more pressure on me than I put on myself. Um, I, we have a plan here. We're sticking to the plan. Um, I think any time, every, after every season, you go back and look at your plan and you tweak it here, you tweak it there, which is what we'll do when the season's over. Um, but there's plenty of examples throughout history of, of ten years that have maybe not started um, like people would have think. And but finish greatly. Um, coach K is going to become the all-time winningest basketball coach in NCAA history tonight, <laughs> and he would be one tenure that comes to mind. And um, you know, I believe in these kids. I believe in this program. I believe in our plan, um, and we have made progress. Um, certainly not as much as any of us like at this time. Um, it's been incremental progress, and I believe that incremental <coughs> progress, as we continue to move, will add up into the um, dividends that we all want and the people here deserve. How are you dealing with the losses, though? I mean, it's got to be tough, tough on the players, fans, and then how do you, you know? Fans, um, do you, how do you keep your spirits? I up? just come in every day and I look at how we can get better. I'm looking at the, I could choose to look at the problems, or I could choose to look at the things that we're doing well and build on those. And I choose to look at the things we're doing well and build on those, and um, and look at the small victories we're having, and try to build on those for the team. And I'm dealing with young guys, and they don't get to come in when it's dark and go home when it's dark like I do. Um, they're on the campus, um, they're out in the community, and um, you know, so I'm, I'm more concerned with our team and keeping these young guys' spirits up, um, keeping them focused on the process of getting better, and um, that's what we're doing, that's what I'm working towards with our players. Do you have a, like a support mechanism outside? I mean, you have buddies around the country that have called you and just, you know, spirits up. I do. I do get. I do. I do get. Hear from or I do get several Charlie guys I hear buddy? from. I don't. I talk to different people. Um, I bounce things off of people when I feel like I need to. Um, you know, having a wife as a coach, I can bounce things off of her. Right, and that's that's a great support system um, to have. And um, I knew when I arrived here that um, it would not be an easy task. Right. I did know that, and we're just going to continue to build, and that's what you do. You build a program, and there's no uh, magic wand to fixing it. And if you take shortcuts and you compromise, then you really won't get it fixed. And that's what we're going to do. And um, and I know at times, you know, at, at times it hasn't looked like people want it to look, um, but I know what it's going to look like when it's finished. And that's what keeps me on track here, because I know what the end game is going to be. And I know what we're going to get it to look like. Um, but there's a process of getting to that point. And we are a work in progress right now. We're going to continue to work and we're going to continue to progress. Do you think there's things that the coaching staff, you and everybody could have done better too than just the players? Well, I think as we go that... back, as we go back and evaluate the season, like I will, I think there's things everybody could do better. All right, starting with me as the head football coach and our staff and the players. I think we all share in this. And we're going to look at all that because we're all in this thing together. 
but it starts with me as the leader of the organization. And I, I always look critically at myself, um, and I will continue to do that. Um, you know, you look at like because Mitch Strait may or may not be out this week. I don't know, but you're, Mitch Strait is out this he's week. He's out. Okay. So you're talking about starting four seniors on the offensive line. Um, so how difficult is that area of the football team to build? I mean, that's well, I think I think clearly um, the games are won or lost at the line of scrimmage, and um, you know, so um, you have to be good up front, and you have to be. Um, what we haven't had this season is consistency up front of who's playing. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you're playing next to somebody different, you know, we, 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 you kind of got a rhythm you're in and you got calls and you got things you got to get done. And when your center's different and then your left guard's different and then your left tackle's different, um, the mainstay in the line consistently through the entire 10 games we played so far has been the right tackle. And he's played every game and Jake's been playing well <coughs> um, for us. But he's been the only guy in that group that's played every game this season. Force. Um, so that's not the ideal situation. As you look down the road with that, uh, you, you know, I know you redshirted a couple of linemen this year and played one true freshman. Um, I mean, you know, like how many, in your own mind, how many offensive linemen do you have to go out and get? Or well, how do you well, sure that going we're going to, you know, Jared Pugsley played quite a bit last week, first snaps okay. of the season for him, and he played a guard, and he will play again at guard this week. Um, so we're going to start with. Um, Jared and Bice and a Schweitzer and a straight, right? Those guys have played. Uh, I don't know if Vinny Rizzo will go through spring practice, okay, coming off the injury. But we're going to probably have to sign six, and we will clearly have to go into junior college ranks in, in, for some of that six to get some guys that can immediately help us. And, you know, um, it's, we, just, we, we are continually trying to catch up in the line situation because when I arrived here, uh, we lost a group of guys. And then we had a group of guys get medically disqualified, which when I first got here in that six week window, five week window to recruit, you quite don't know that those guys are gonna get medically disqualified. You know, that's not something that with the first day in the job you walk in and say, okay, these four guys are out. And um, so, you know, in that class, there wasn't a lot of linemen, there were two. Um, you know, uh, McCluskey and uh, Michael Leo. And then last year, in our first full recruiting class, we signed five. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to continue to sign linemen every year, um, you know, in this league, in any league, but in this league, because I believe that the game is won and lost at the line of scrimmage. And we'll have similar situation on the defensive front. And we have some guys, Hassan returning, um, guys like Isaiah and Dejour Morris and Nico Capone, and John Griggs should be a lot better football players next year. And we're going to add to that mix high school or junior college, but that'll be our offensive line and defensive line number on signing day will be a large number. Do you have a counter, a counter estimate? I mean, I guess I can look it up. Like how many freshmen or people you signed from last year that you've been able to redshirt? Uh, I really haven't thought about that okay. clearly. Um, you know, and I know on the offensive line we redshirted uh, Bohan, Brumball, and Clay. Okay, we redshirted those three gentlemen. We redshirted Cody Grice. We redshirted Kyle Pohl uh, from the last class, and Zach DeRazio has redshirted from the last class. Um, on defensive front, um, we did not redshirt to any of them. Um, in the secondary, we redshirted Bryce Cheek. Um, and we did not redshirt the linebackers. And I might be losing track of some guys um, at this time. So clearly not as many guys have redshirted as you would want to redshirt as we move forward in the program. Buffalo seems to play pretty well at home. They have played very well at home. Look at their scores. What, what, yeah, you they, noticed they, that? They, yeah, I noticed they've played very well at home. They beat Ohio U at home. Um, they've played really well against Northern Illinois at home. Um, they have two home games remaining. They beat Stony Brook at home, and they played very well against Connecticut at home. Um, you know, they've played really, really well at home. And we look at their scores, they've played well all year. They've been in competitive ball games. They were beating Eastern Michigan 17 to 16 in the third quarter um, last week, and then Eastern had two drives, and uh, Buffalo couldn't, couldn't respond to those drives. But um, they got a 1,000-yard rusher in Brandon Oliver, over a 2,000-yard passer in Chaz Anderson. Um, Marcus Rivers has 55 catches on the season. I mean, so they have done, I think, a nice job on offense. Um, Khalil Mack uh, is 15 tackles for losses, leads our league in the top six, I think, in the country in that area. And, and um, you know, so 
Um, you know, they, they play a 3-4 defensive scheme, which is similar to what VMI played. And uh, so at least we have gone against it before. And um, so it will give us a little bit of at least a background in it when we uh, move forward with our preparations. <clears throat> So you talk about when you couldn't, you know, in the second half you couldn't get the momentum back. I mean, what kind of things do you have to do to, to get the momentum back? Well, you have to execute better. I mean, and, um, you know, I think we go on it, we run a play. Right now nine guys are probably on their game and there's a couple of guys that aren't. And then you go on defense and there's nine guys that are on their game and a couple of guys that aren't. And we seem to have that consistently throughout our offense and defense. Uh, why is that? I can't put my finger on why that is. Um, but that causes um, <coughs> times big plays for the opponent um, or it causes negative plays for you. I mean, at the beginning of the, of the third quarter, we had a third and three, we didn't convert, we had a punt. We had a third and one, we didn't convert, and we had a punt. Those are very makeable third downs, and those are ones that we need to make. And later on, we had a third and eight or nine, and we converted it. And those are sometimes the hardest ones to convert. Um, so we have to be better at that. Their, their defense, uh, what else do they do? Three, four? Um, and they get in a four-man front, they put a 46's back. hand down, okay. and they'll blitz. Um, uh -huh. They're versatile, very, very, very multiple in what they do. Do you know Quinn at all? Or? I, I just don't know Jeff very well. Um, you know, we both came in the league at the same time and um, developed a relationship through being in the league at the same time. Um, but I didn't really know him uh, much prior to us coaching in this league. Does it mean anything you beat him last year? Uh, it means we beat him last year. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know confidence or well, game you hope plan, so. Game you hope so. Like I well, know. I think what's what's good is you got some familiarity with the the um, personnel um, because we hadn't played Central or Eastern. Um, we played them this year. So when we turned on the film, this is my really first study of Central's personnel. My really first study of Eastern's personnel. Uh, the Ohio, Miami, Temple, Kent. Um, you know, Buffalo, we played them last year, so there's certain familiarity. Now, you, you throw out what you did against them last year, against Kent and Miami and Temple, because they're new coaches. <laughs> and what you did one year does always apply to the next year, too, because your personnel is different and their personnel is different, and people tweak their schemes. Injury report, by the way? I mean, uh, Mitch Strait is the only one that's uh, cl clearly out with an ankle. ankle. Um, he was out last week, and he's clearly out again. Everybody else is progressing and, and uh, thought we'd have a few guys back last week by the time we played in the receiver core. Uh, when I was in here a week ago, I really felt that that was what we were um, um, very hopeful of. It didn't work out that way and we believe we'll have some of those guys back this week. So does uh, uh, Antoine stay on offense now? Antoine will play offense this week, yes. Okay. <clears throat> he's done a little bit of everything for you. So. Well, he's, he's someone that's been very unselfish um, I mean, you look at the Miami game, and he's practiced defense all week, played defense, and in the middle of the second quarter, he's playing offense without practicing. I mean, he's been very unselfish. Um, he's up in here studying tape. He's, until last week, started on three special teams. We took him off one. And, um, you know, he's certainly done everything we can ask him to do. And, and we have several guys doing that. I just, we got to get deeper. Um, that's going to be one of, the, one of the things in the off season. Um, some of our depth was younger. And then some of our depth, you know, obviously gets deteriorated when you get some guys banged up. So we got to be deeper to withstand um, some of the injuries that you sustain during the course of a season. Is it at all important to you that Juwan gets a thousand yards, or is that just something that happens? It's important to me that our team finishes the season playing much better than we're playing right now. And it's important for the players to go in the off season with that. Anything else? Good. All right. Good. Hey, thank Thanks. you very much for coming. You have a great day. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.